Hey guys, welcome to week five of my MIT challenge where I am attempting to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So today I want to take a little departure to talk about an article I read from the New York Times which was talking about how a lot of students are dropping out of hard math and science programs like physics, biology, computer science because the math is too difficult. And I also want to tie this into Another article I read, which is from blogging friend Chris Gilbo, where he's talking about how he's been able to build a nice life for himself despite not having any formal credentials, or more importantly, even though he was really bad at math, he still managed to be successful and have a nice life. And this is something that I feel reflects both of these, reflect a really common sentiment today, that math isn't very important, that math is just something you have to get through if you want to understand engineering or physics. You just have to get through it. It's once you get through the math, then you can actually study what actually interests you. And that's sort of true. And Chris Gilbo's sentiment sort of reflects this in that he's managed to be really successful without being very good at math. And he wants to sort of say, you know, if you don't feel like you're good at math, don't worry about it. And I think that's fine. I don't want to make people feel bad if they feel like they're not really good at math. But I think part of the problem is, is that math is difficult. It is hard. I don't think anybody is here to say that math is easy. But we've been trained to believe that math isn't very useful or it's just some barrier that you have to go through in order to understand some specific subject. That it's really abstract, it's not very useful. The problem, the reason math is difficult but also the reason it's very important is not because it's very narrowly useful and it's only good for you know doing a few equations with things, it's not very important for the real world, is that math is so useful it applies to everything. And so in this video today, I want to try to sell you on, you know, if you're sort of having trouble with your math classes and you're finding it really difficult, you know, it's hard. Math is hard. I know that. But I want to try to give you some hope in why I really like math, even though I find math hard. I want to sell you on why I really like math, why I think you should really like math, and why you can see how math is very important. Because once you realize how something is important, how something is useful to you, you're a lot more motivated to actually go through the process of learning it. So why bother learning math? And to explain that, I think that we all understand that when someone teaches us a rule or a principle of something, it usually only applies some of the time. So if you're learning rules about traffic, for example, when you're learning how to drive, you know, for example, you can't drive over the speed limit. That's a very specific principle. But that principle doesn't apply to very many other things. You can't use that principle of not going over the speed limit, for example, when you're buying groceries or when you're eating or when you're understanding chemistry. Maybe you can a little bit with some effort, but they're not the same principle. There's a principle about driving and it only applies to driving and it doesn't apply to anything else. The reason math is so useful, so useful for everything, is because once you can describe something as being a certain set of relationships in math, then it does not matter what situation you're in. It can be, you can be in a completely different situation. And as long as the relationship between the things are the same, you can use the exact same math, math to understand it. So once you understand math in physics, for example, then you can use those principles of math to understand it in biology, to understand it in chemistry, to understand it in computer science, to understand it in your life, to understand it just in the way you think about the way the world works. You can use it in all those settings. And people get the misconception that math is about symbol manipulation. That it's about working out formulas and memorizing equations. And that might be a little part of math. That might be the part that professors tend to focus on. But that's not what math is about. Math is about these general truths that once you know it in one area, the truth applies to every single area in exactly the same way all the time. And this might seem hard to conceptualize because that doesn't apply to anything else. Very few things, once you know it in one area, do you automatically know it in every other area. But once you know calculus and physics, for example, for relating position and acceleration, you also know all the rules of calculus that you would need to apply to understand it in biology or to understand it in chemistry or to understand it in any other area. And so I want to sell you on math because math isn't about these symbol manipulation. It's about a way of thinking about the world and extracting these general principles that apply all the time no matter once no matter what and if you learn those general principles then you can use math all the time so how, to try to understand why you would learn something specific in math and I'm going to use the example of calculus 
I want to explain something you probably already understand in math, which is multiplication, which is sort of an example of this trend of it being a very general principle. If I told you I have three bags of oranges and each of them have 10 oranges in it, how many oranges do I have? Most of you wouldn't even blink. You'd say I have 30 oranges. Now this might not seem very remarkable, but what's remarkable multi about multiplication is that this principle about math of that I have amounts of things in sets and then I can add them all together and I can get 3 times 10 equals 30, it doesn't matter what I'm counting. I can be talking about bags of oranges, I can be talking about bank account balances, I can be talking about flocks of sheep, I can be talking about tide levels, I can be talking about anything. And as long as this relationship holds, this relationship that math describes, then I already know how to solve all those problems. So to understand calculus, well calculus, people always get it expressed, okay, it's about limit definitions and the chain rule and the product rule and the quotient rule and you have to use integrating by parts and you learn all these specific ways of handling the formulas and manipulating the symbols, but that causes you to miss the thinking about what calculus is. And so if multiplication is about adding things which are the same amount, so you're adding three sets of 10 together, then calculus is about expressing relationships which involve the rate of change of something as related to where it is. So for example, a good example that they use all the time for calculus is that if I know where a ball is at any point in time, so I have a graph which is location my ball is in at any point in time, then what calculus can tell me, what differentiation can tell me, is it can tell me how fast that ball is moving at any point in time. So if I have a map of where the ball is at any point in time, I can also figure out its speed. And integration is the opposite. If I know where, how fast the ball is moving at any point in time, I can tell where it is. So to think of how you can extract this general principle, if you were in your car and you were driving down a straight road and you were looking at the speedometer and you were keeping track of how fast you were going, integration would be able to tell you where you are even if you had no idea, even if you didn't have a map. If you're driving down this straight road, you would be able to use integration to figure out this is where I am. And that's something that's very powerful. It's about taking relate, relating the rate of change of something with the something itself. So when you learn calculus, you're learning simple differentiation, which is going from position to speed, or integration, which tends to go from speed to uh, position. And you can also learn the next level, which is one of the classes I'm doing right now, which is differential equations. And differential equations is making this even more general, where the rate something is changing depends on its speed. So this helps you understand the motion of a pendulum, or if you have a spring and it wobbles back and forth. Differential equations will tell you why it moves in that pattern because of just some very simple general relationships between the ideas. So I'm not trying to tell you math is easy. Math is hard, and if you struggle with math, then that's something you can work on, that's something you can work through. And maybe you can be like Chris, maybe you can go through and study something else and not work on math. So it's not that everyone needs to learn math. But I want to sell you on if you are interested in math or you're not sure why you're learning all this math, it's because you're learning general principles that apply everywhere. And so that little math chunk that you do in a biology degree isn't just this hurdle you have to overcome in order to understand those biology equations. It's an understanding of the way the world works and the relationship between ideas that applies no matter what you study. So if you understand calculus that you learn for biology, then you understand the same calculus that you need to learn for physics or for any other subject. So if you're struggling with math, yes, math is difficult. It can be very difficult to get to that intuition. I struggle with it myself, but that doesn't mean it's not important. It doesn't mean it's not useful. Once you have that intuition about the idea, you can use it for everything. So thanks for listening to this video. I know I've been ranting a little bit about it, but if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe below and I'll be updating you guys next week with more progress on my challenge to learn MIT's computer science curriculum.